fast and correct, choose to. That's the slogan of Bazel, an open source build tool to test and build software at any scale. Bazel is blazingly fast, language independent and it's used by many big companies. What makes it so special is that you precisely define the inputs and the outputs to model the dependencies of your codebase. Hence an output will only be rebuilt if any of its inputs has been changed. And that's exactly what makes Bazel so extremely fast. Bazel also uses a sandbox to make builds reproducible no matter on which machine they are running on. This video is perfect for you if you have no previous experience using Bazel because today you will learn how to install Bazel, what the main concepts are and how to use Bazel. So let's get started. By the way, all of the resources for this video can be found on this GitHub repository. We will start by installing Bazel on our system and the recommended way to install Bazel is through Bazelisk. Bazelisk is a tool that automatically manages multiple versions of Bazel. If you scroll down you can find the installation instructions for Mac, Windows and Linux. My preferred way of installing Bazelisk is through Node.js with the help of the Node package manager. After you have installed Bazelisk, you can verify that it has worked by running Bazel version. Running the command for the first time will download the latest Bazel version to your machine. In my case that's version 6. To get started you have to create a workspace file in the root of your project. This will mark the directory as a Bazel repository. It is also recommended to pin the version of Bazel for your project. And that can be done by creating a Bazel version file where you just enter the version of Bazel that you want to use, in my case that's 6.0.0. You can find the latest version on the official Bazel GitHub repository under the releases section. But if you want you can also specify another version of Bazel and if I now run Bazel version again it will download and use version 5. But we are going to stick to the latest Bazel version which is version 6. The most important command you need to know is the build command, which as the name suggests builds your code. To build everything in your repository you can run the basil build dot 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 command. But in our case the repository is empty and hence we get an error that no targets could be found. We can change that by creating a package. Any directory inside your repository can be a package. And to mark a directory as a package you need to create a build file inside of it. Hence I am simply going to create a build.bazel file in the root of our repository. Now Bazel doesn't complain anymore when building everything and you can also see that one package has been loaded. You can also notice that Bazel has created four different directories which are just symlinks pointing to the Bazel cache. These are created for the convenience of the user to for example be easily able to inspect build outputs or test logs. Before writing our first Bazel target we will set up our development environment. If you are using Visual Studio Code then make sure to install the official Bazel extension. And I also recommend to install Buildifier which is a tool for formatting your Bazel code. In my case I'm going to install that through npm. I've also enabled format on save in my editor to automatically run Buildifier on each file save. Now we can actually start writing our first target which will be done in the build file. A target is basically a recipe that describes what should happen in a certain build step. A target can have some inputs and in most cases it generates an output. And Bazel works under the fundamental assumption that the same inputs will always produce the same output. A target is always defined by a rule which is basically the implementation of the target. Hence a rule describes what should happen to the inputs to produce a certain output. Bazel has some predefined rules which you can use, you can also write your own rules or you can use rules from external dependencies. To keep it simple we will start by using the predefined gen rule which you can think of as a function that we call with certain arguments and the first required argument is the name of the target. I will give it the name of example target. Hence the gen rule has two more mandatory attributes, one for the output files and one for the command that should be run. The output files are defined with the help of the outs attribute which is an array and the bash command will be specified inside the cmd attribute. To generate a new file with bash we can for example use the echo command and pipe its output into a new text file. We also have to explicitly tell Bazel that example.txt will be an output file from this target. Since this build file is located in the root of our Bazel repository, this command will actually be executed inside this directory. 
but Basil expects this output to be located inside this bin subdirectory. Therefore, we need to prefix this output file with the path to this bin directory. Now we can run the Basil build dot 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 command to build everything in our repository. And as you can see, Basil has generated this example.txt file with hello Basil as its content. Instead of building everything with build dot dot dot, we can also build only a specific target. To do that, you have to specify the label of the target. You can list all labels in your repository by running basil query dot dot dot. In our case, there's only one target with the label slash slash column example target. The double slash refers to the root of the repository and everything after the column denotes the name of the target. Between the double slash and the column, you have to specify the package name, which in our case is empty. But if we put the build file inside the subdirectory, then the name of the package will be the name of the subdirectory, in this case test. It's actually a really bad practice to put the full output path inside your command. Instead, you should use the outs variable provided by Bazel. So if I rerun Bazel build, the same file will be generated. Because we have specified only one output file, we could also use an even shorter syntax of $add to reference the output path. Currently our target produces an output out of thin air, which is totally fine. But usually a target also has some inputs, which in this case for the gen rule is the sources attribute. Let's create an input.txt file and write something into it. Instead of writing this constant string into our output file, we could now actually read the content of our input file and pipe that into the output file. To read the content of a file, we use the cat command and we can access the path to the input file by using the sources variable. If we now run basil build everything, we should see the content of the input file inside the output file. Now we can actually change our input file to something else and after rerunning, the output file should also change. And again, since we only have one input, we can also use a shorter syntax, which is this one, to reference the input file path. Rerunning basal build should now produce the same output. Our current input file is located in the root package, but we can also reference input files from other packages. So let me quickly create another package with a few files. Hence, I've simply created a files directory and added a build file to it to mark it as a package. I've also added three text files with different contents but files from within a package are not available to other packages by default. Hence, if we try to reference a file from the files package, for example the choose.txt file, we get an error when we run base build. The error states that the choose.txt target is not defined inside the files package, and it also suggests a fix to the error. We can use the exports files rule to turn the file into a target. Now we can rerun the build and it's successful. But now let's do something more fancy and try to concatenate all of those three files into this one output file. Therefore, at first we have to export all three files from the files package. We can either list them here manually or we can also use a pattern to include all text files from the package. Then let's add the other two files to our sources attribute and we also have to revert back to the sources variable since we now have multiple input files. After rerunning the build command, we now have the contents of all three files inside our output file. But as you can see here, the basis slogan is a little bit messed up and that's because Buildifier automatically sorted those input files. We can work around that by reordering the inputs and then adding a single comment line inside our array. This will prevent Buildifier from sorting this array. Now let's rerun basic build and we have our correct slogan inside our output file. Besides building your code, Basil is also commonly used to test your code. Hence I'm now going to show you how you can build a simple test that checks if the content of a file equals some string. We will do this by using the predefined sh test rule. This rule will run a bash script and evaluate its exit status code. If the exit status code is zero, then the test will pass and otherwise the test will fail. So we will create a small script with the name of file equals test.sh. I've just created the file for the script and we also need to make sure to make it executable by running this command. Since we want our script to be able to compare the content of a file to a string, we need two input variables. The first one is the path to the file and the second one is the actual string we want to compare the content to. 
if the content of the file equals the string then we exit with 0 and otherwise we exit with 1. Now we have to make the file that we want to compare accessible to the shtest rule and this can be done using the data attribute. Here we will reference the file that we have generated previously using the gen rule. Lastly we have to provide those two arguments to our script and this can be done using the args attribute. The first argument will be the path to this example.txt file, which can be obtained by running the location method on the example target. As a second argument we will pass the string that we want to compare the content of this example file to. In our case that's the basal slogan. Now we can try to run basal test everything and you should see that the test has passed. Let's try to change the string a little bit and rerun the test and now you should see that the test has failed. You can even inspect the log output of the test, which in our case is just test failed. By the way, there is also another command that you might want to know, and that is basal clean, which will clear out the basal cache for you. So after running this command, all the symlinks to the basal cache will disappear. Because I've just cleaned the basal cache, rerunning basal test everything will at first build the gen rule and then run the sh test, since the sh test depends on the gen rule. If I now rerun the tests again, you can see that the tests have been cached, hence they finished immediately. I can also make this more clear by adding a sleep at the beginning of our test script. So now running the test will take about one second, but executing the tests again will finish instantly. As you might have noticed, we also have a small warning here, and this can simply be fixed by adding the size small to our sh test. You might also want to see the output logs of your test scripts and this can be done by adding the test output all flag to your command. Here you can see that test pass has been printed by our bash script. As I've already mentioned, besides using the native rules, it's also possible to write your own rules. But most Bazel end users won't do that. There are already plenty of existing rules for different languages like Rust, Go, Node.js or Python built by the open source community. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see tutorials for any of those rules. I'm also not going to show you how you can write your own rules, since I don't think that's necessary for basal beginners. But what I'm going to show you is how you can write macros. A macro is basically a wrapper that calls one or multiple other rules. So for example we might want to extract away the implementation details of this sh test. I've just created a new package called testing and in here we will create a file called file equals .bzl. That's because custom rules and therefore also macros are always written in those bzl files. The language that custom rules are written in is called Starlog. It's a modified version of Python and by the way we have already been using Starlog in our build files. So let's start writing our small macro that will simplify this sh test. The name of our macro will be file equals test and it will take a file and an expected content as its attributes. The user of this macro should also be able to use common basal attributes like the name and this can be done by using the asterisk asterisk keyword arguments argument which you might already know from python. Inside the definition of the macro we will call the sh test. But here we have to call the sh test via native.sh test. Now we can basically copy everything from the sh test that we have already written and modify it to make it more generic. So at first the name will be provided by the keywords arguments. I will put them down below here. We can keep the size small but we have to modify the sources script array. Since macros are always evaluated from where they are called we have to change this relative path to an absolute path. And since the script is now located inside the testing package, we have to prefix the relative path with slash slash testing column. We also have to modify the arguments to make them dynamic. The first argument should be the path to this file. Hence we somehow have to get the label of this file into this string and this can be done using string interpolation. And this works by substituting this percentage s with this variable specified here. And the same can be done for our expected content, which is the second argument. Lastly, we have to provide the file as a dependency to the sh test by specifying it inside this data attribute array. To use our new macro, we have to import it at the top of our build file by using the load method. Once that's done, we can replace our existing sh test with our new file equals test. We don't need the size and the sources attributes anymore since we have already specified them here in our macro. But we do have to provide our input file, which will be this example target. 
Finally, we can remove the arcs and data attributes and replace them with our expected content. If you now run Baser test, you should see that it still fails because we haven't exported our bash script from the testing package. So I'm just going to add this line to the build file of the testing package. Because we have effectively outsourced the implementation details to this macro, our target looks a lot cleaner now. And best of all, this macro can now be reused in other build files. So let's reuse the macro inside our files package. At first you have to import the macro by using the load method and then it's really easy to test the content of each of our files. Now you can run basal test and you should see that there are four test cases now which have all passed. By the way, since Bazel keeps track of all the inputs and outputs of your dependencies, it's also possible to generate a graph of your dependency tree. For instance, if you want to generate the dependency graph for the example test target, you have to run this command here. This command will generate a PNG file with the graph inside of it. At the top you can see the example test target and its dependencies are the example target, which is the input file, and also the test script. And the example target itself has also three inputs, which are those three files here. Lastly, I want to show you how you can set up a GitHub action pipeline that runs Bazel inside of it. This can easily be done by using the setup Bazel disk action. All you have to do is to check out your code, install Bazel using the setup Bazel disk action, and then you can run Bazel commands inside your GitHub action. And that's basically everything you need to know to get started with Bazel. Of course, there's so much more to learn about it, so let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more Bazel videos. Also, make sure to start the GitHub repository, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. And if you found this video helpful, then consider sending me some anonymous cryptocurrencies. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and have a great time.